welcome back in continuation to the last lecture where we discussed uh, about uh, semantic tableaux method we discussed some examples uh, uh, we discussed some examples and we discussed about when they are considered to be uh, when they are going to be valid etc so we will talk about some more examples in this class uh, so that we will get ourselves familiarized with uh, this particular kind of technique so this technique occupies the central position for this uh, course so that's why we are spending little bit of uh, little bit more time uh, on this particular kind of method so as uh, i said in the uh, last lecture uh, semantic tableaux method is all about finding some kind of counter example suppose if you are trying to uh, check the validity of a given well formed formula of a predicate uh, of predicate logic what we are trying to do is is that first you negate the formula and then you construct a tree based on the tree rules that we have discussed in the last class and then if uh, the negation of the formula leads to the branch closure then we said that negation of that formula is unsatisfiable and whenever not x is unsatisfiable x is considered to be valid so that is one thing which we have been doing and then the second thing is is that if you want to talk about consistency of a set of statements in the predicate logic then what we need to do is you construct a tree diagram for these two sentences and then when the branch uh, clo uh, branch doesn't close and all that means it satisfies the formula uh, the given formulas and hence these two formulas are said to be consistent uh, for example if you want to talk about uh, consistency of uh, these things for example if you take into consideration px and qx and then there's another thing for all x px implies not qx let us consider that let us assume that these are the two statements that are given to you so now we would like to see whether these two are consistent to each other or not using semantic tableaux method so the first thing uh, we need to do in the semantic tableaux method is is that always handle the uh, the formula which consists of existential quantifier so now first you eliminate this quantifier using this uh, particular kind of rules suppose if you have a formula like this in your tree then uh, if you remove this uh, existential quantifier then you are replacing it with some kind of uh, parameter a and then each time when you remove this existential operator existential quantifier you have to use a new parameter where a is new so now if you remove this particular kind of thing then this will become p a and q a so this is one of the instances of this particular kind of formula so now we are checking for the consistency uh consistency of uh, these two formulas now fourth one uh so now uh, this p x implies not q x holds for all x in particular so that's why it holds for even Uh, this particular kind of thing also one instance of this one could be even this as well not q a so now uh, we use the same rule x implies y is not x and y so you apply uh, this particular kind of uh, rule for this one then this will become not p a and not q a so now uh, p a and q a can be written in this sense Uh, i'm just writing it here itself q a whenever you have two formulas like this p and q the tree diagram for this one is simply this one p and q it it looks like a trunk so p and q uh, fo followed by that you have to write like this in the tree diagram so now in this one you have p a here and not p a here this branch closes i means these two are contradictory to each other a literal and its negation is uh, found here that's why this branch closes and there is no way in which you can go beyond this one and you have qa and not qa here even this branch also closes so that means <coughs> you you list out this uh, statements one after another and you construct a tree diagram and all the branches closes that means uh, there exists some x px and qx and this particular kind of formula for all x uh, px implies not qx 
is said to be inconsistent, inconsistent to each other. Why? Because uh, if you take both the statements and construct a tree, it leads to the branch closure. So that means unsatisfiability. So it is not satisf satisfiable in any one of these interpretations. So uh, because all the branches closes, so in that sense there exists some x for all x px implies not qx they are said to be inconsistent to each other. Uh, so you can uh, replace it with uh, some kind of uh, proposition uh, uh, if p you can replace p with some any other kind of thing in the natural language you yourself can see that if you state for all x px implies not qx and at the same time you say that there exists some x px and qx then these two statements are each other. So let us consider another example and see whether these two formulas are said to be consistent or not. So just for the sake of uh, understanding we are taking these simple examples uh, then later I move on to uh, check the validity of a given uh, predicate logical formula. Let us say there exists some x p x and q x this is the first statement and you consider another statement such as p x r q x and then the third one take any other thing such as there exists some x it is not the case that there exists some x uh, p x. So just for the sake of uh, time being you take these three things. So now we want to check whether these three statements are consistent to each other or not. So now you start constructing the tree diagram for these things. Uh, first you eliminate this existential quantifier it will be P A and Q A. So now uh, first you eliminated this one existential quantifier and then one instance of this one is going to be this one. Now fifth. Now uh, this can be written as uh, not there exists some x px is nothing but this negation goes inside and negation of existential uh, quantifier will become universal quantifier and you have to push this negation inside and this will become this one. So now you can write straight away like this for all x not px. So now uh, here in the second one if you eliminate this existential quantifier uh, uh, then you need to ensure that uh, it is replaced by a parameter which is not used earlier. So A is the parameter which is used here. So we are not supposed to use it again here. Next time when you remove this existential quantifier, you need to use another parameter let us say B other than this A. This is going to be Q B. Now, uh, so now the next one is going to be this one for all x not. Uh, uh, p x. So this is going to be true for all x and all irrespective of whatever you substitute whether a or b it is going to be the case. So that is why it is going to be the case not p b. So now uh, p a and q a it can be written in this sense q a. So that is the fourth one fourth uh, one after another you can write and the second one is p b and q b and then you have not p b. Once again since you have p b here and not p b here this branch closes. It turns out to be the case that uh, these three statements there exists some x p x and not, not p x and q x there exists some x p x or q x uh, sorry uh, yeah, this is uh, r so you are not supposed to close like this. So this is going to be this one. P B R Q B. So now, uh, so this is going to be like this. Uh, this is P B and Q B. So this we expanded it, and then it will become P B and Q B. Since there are connective is there, which I didn't uh, notice it. So now, not P B and P B closes, and then. Uh, this branch is uh, open. So this branch is open in the sense that uh, uh, 
uh, you have q a here but you have q b here so there is no way in which you can cancel the you can close the branch that means this branch is open so now from the open branch uh, open branch is the one which satisfies this particular kind of uh, this formula satisfies the formulas means uh, uh, the values that that are going to be there here satisfies that we that makes this three formulas true so what are these things when q b yeah, is t and not p b uh, becomes t and then both p a uh, t uh, q a t and this is going to satisfy these three formulas that means they are going to make these three formulas true so it is in that sense these three formulas are said to be consistent to each other so the only one thing which you need to note that is so list out all these formulas one by one after another and then construct a tree diagram and if uh, at least one branch is open that means the formula given formulas are said to be consistent but in the earlier case when we constructed a tree diagram for the given formulas all the branches closed that means it is unsatisfiable so in this case at least in one instance it is satisfiable then it is considered to be these three sentences are considered to be consistent to each other so this is the way to check uh, whether uh, the given statements are consistent to each other or not so now let us talk about some more examples with respect to validity uh, for validity what you will do is for example if you are given a formula x what you need to do is you need to construct uh, a tree diagram for not x and then if all the branches uh, closes that means you land up with a contradiction all the branches closes then not x is considered to be unsatisfiable and that ensures us that x is going to be valid so that is what we will be doing in the case of uh, checking the validity of a given uh, well formed formula in the predicate logic this is an important decision procedure method because so in this method uh, uh, this also serves as a proof in a sense that any proof is considered to be uh, 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 considered to be ending in finite steps in finite intervals of time so now let us consider this uh, example uh, for all x for all y for all z r x y r y z r x z etc and the second statement is for all x for all y r x y r y x and the third statement for all x there exists some y r x y and the fourth one for, for all x r x x so now we want to show whether 1 2 3 the first three statements leads to the fourth statement or not that means fourth statement is considered to be a semantic consequence or logical consequence of 1 2 3 so for that what you will be doing simply is is that you list out all the three statements one after another and you take the negation of the conclusion and then you start constructing the tree and if it turns out that all the branches closes then uh, the negation of the conclusion is unsatisfiable that means the given uh, conclusion is, is considered to be the correct kind of conclusion from these three premises so now let us consider this particular example and then we will see uh, so why we are doing all these things because we have to for getting ourselves familiarized with this particular kind of technique we are solving these particular kinds of problems so now uh, the statements are uh, the given statements in the predicate logic are like this first one for all x for all y uh, for all z uh, this is the case r x uh, uh, y uh, and r y z implies r x z this is a kind of uh, some transitivity property uh, second uh, we have for all x for all y uh, we have r x y uh, implies r y x 3 for all x there exists some y uh, r x y uh, fourth one so now this is considered to be the conclusion for all x r, r x x so now we want to check whether 
this particular kind of statement follows from these three or not using uh, the technique of semantic tableaux method. So, for that what you need to do is uh, to take into consideration the negation of this formula. So, that is not for all x or x x. Uh, there is a different kind of notation that is being used here. Sometimes I write uh, r x x uh, in some other textbooks it is simply written as r x x. So, just to separate uh, the predicates with the individual variables uh, subscript and superscript and subscript you write it in this way. So, it does not matter you know whatever way you write r x x means this x and x are in some kind of order it can be written in this sense or followed by x x or it can be written even in this sense. So, it is used interchangeably and the other thing is is that uh, for quantifiers uh, in some textbooks you put parenthesis like this uh, just to separate uh, this one for example, you can write like this in some other textbooks it is simply this parenthesis is ruled out and then you can simply write x and x ok. So, this is only for our convention and all the uh, all these things are uh, uh, correct on correct kind of correct ways of representing the same thing. So, now uh, we are showing that uh, 1 2 3 this is a set uh, set of propositions leads to 4 that means these 3 things leads to this particular kind of thing. So, now for the semantic tableaux method you start with the negation of the conclusion. So, now not for all x or x x means this one if you simplify this one then this is there exists some x and then you push this negation inside it will become r x and x. So, that is what we are going to write here. So, this is there exists some x not r x x. So, this brackets needs to be clear and all. So, now the strategy uh, for this semantic tableaux method is, is that uh, first you need to eliminate this existential quantifier before handling the universal quantifiers. So, the best thing to remove or uh, best thing to handle is this fifth one. So, that is when you replace this uh, uh, when you eliminate this existential quantifier and we have a rule if something is true like this then phi of a where you have to replace this thing with phi of a where a the parameter a is mu. So, now uh, this is going to be uh, like this not of r a and e this is the first thing that we will be uh, trying to do. Uh, so, now uh, in the same way uh, 6 1 7. So, now coming back to this one for all x there exists some y r x y that means there exists some y r x y holds for all x that means it holds for even uh, when you substitute a for x that also is going to be uh, it is going to hold for that particular kind of thing also. So, this is for all x there exists some y r x y. So, now this particular kind of thing holds for all x that means there exists some y r even if you replace it x with a that is going to hold now. So, now this is what you are going to write here there exists some y so, how did you get this one 5 existential instantiation uh, for all y r. Uh, so, this is uh, a y this is uh, this one 3 uh, universal instantiation because you have removed this universal quantified. So, now 8 uh, since uh, this is the only thing which we have in this one which starts with the existential quantifier we settle with this thing and then we move on to the universal quantifiers. So, now there exists some y r a y uh, if you remove this uh, particular kind of existential quantifier you have to ensure that uh, when you replace y with uh, any other parameter that parameter should not figure out in any one of this 
any other things above this particular kind of formula. That means when you remove this y, it has to be it has to be b rather than a. Anything other than a, you can substitute it for this one. So this is going to be r a uh, b rather than r a a because a is already exhausted here. So this is uh, seven existential instantiation nine. Uh, so uh, now coming back to this one. Uh, so this is over, and this is uh, uh, okay. Now coming back to this one. For all x, for all y, r x y implies r y z. You take any, you substitute any values x and y, that r x y implies r y x holds. That means if you substitute x for a, y for b, then also that is going to hold. So in that sense, uh, uh, this is going to be R uh, R A B. So you substitute x for a and y for b, and this is going to be the case. And then R for y, you substitute it b, and for a, substitute it a. So this is R A B implies R B A. So how did you get this one? You substituted x for for a y for b uh, so this is what we have now hmm, uh, you expand this one so uh, whenever you have a formula x implies y uh, it is like this x implies y is not x and y so now apply uh, this on this one it will become not r a b and then R B A. Problem is little bit uh, lengthy and all, so one needs to have a little bit patience uh, to check this validity of this particular kind of formula. So tree might be a little bit big, but it is still manageable. It ends in finite uh, intervals of time, uh, in finite steps. So now this is what we have. Now observe this particular kind of thing r a b and you have not r a b this is exactly contradictory to each other it is like x and not x now this branch closes here itself so now we need to expand this particular kind of branch this is this branch which is open there is no b a etc so now what is unchecked is this one so we need to note that uh, uh, universal quantifiers uh, whenever a formula starts with the universal quantifier, you can. There is no way you can check the formula and all. In the case of uh, propositional logic, for example, if you have p implies q, not q, etc., and all, uh, r implies p. While constructing the semantic tableaux method, first uh, when you are checking this particular kind of formula, then you write it like this, and then you check this formula like this. That means you are not, you are no longer uh, using the same formula again. But if this formula starts with uh, universal quantifier like this, p x q x, this can be used n number of times. Recursively, you can use the same formula because it happens for all x. So, in the case of propositional logic, each time when you are uh, expanding the tree with these formulas, you are checking these formulas. Now. Next time, when you do it, when you check this particular kind of formula, you do like this: not r, not r, or p, not r. So now you check this formula and all the formulas are checked. So uh, you put tick mark for this particular kind of thing. So that is not going to happen in this particular kind of situation. It can be used recursively and all. So now coming back to this particular kind of formula. Now in this formula, what you do is uh, uh, this thing. Uh, you substitute uh, x for a, y for b and z for c, z for e, sorry. So wherever you have x, you substitute it with a, and wherever you have y, you substitute it with b, and wherever you have z, you substitute it again with the a only. That substitution should be uniform. Then this formula will become, for example, here you have like this, for all x, for all y, for all z, r, x, y, uh, and r, y, z implies r x z. So now uh, you are substituted like this x for a 
wherever you have x you substitute with a wherever you have y substitute with b and then wherever you have z you substitute it with a so now this will become r now you are eliminating these quantifiers now one instance of that one is this particular kind of thing so now uh, this will become a uh, b the first one and r y z means instead of y we have b here uh, b and a implies this one r x z r x means a uh, z means uh, uh, a x and z are same so that is why r a a why we did like this because we have a term r b a somehow we need to eliminate this particular kind of term so that is the reason why we cleverly chosen this variables to be like this so now this is what you substitute it here now this will become r so now if you further simplify this one so this is x implies y so now this will become not of uh, uh, not of r uh, so this is not x not r a b and r b a and then uh, this simplifies to this one r a and a so now this is going to be like this uh, not of uh, r a b is like this not of r uh, a and b and this is not of r b and a and this remains as it is so now uh, you need to substitute the entire thing here for this open branch so now uh, we have uh, just write it down here uh, just to remove this particular kind of thing let this branch remains the same so now you observe whatever is the open branch and you list it out on this particular kind of thing and you have not r a b and then you have not of r a a and then all the way down these are the things which we have so now observe this particular kind of thing not of r a a and you have not r a a this branch closes actually this should be like this since we do not have space here so we have gone the other way around so not r a a and then you have r a a this closes now coming back to this one r a b and not r a b this branch closes now uh, not r b a uh, there is something called uh, not r b a uh, where is this ah uh, yeah here r b a is there here and then all the way down here you have to write this also this i for, forgotten uh, r b a is there and not r b a is there even this also closes so now all the branches closes so what does it mean so we started with these uh, three formulas and then this is considered to be the conclusion and we negated the conclusion and that leads to the branch closure that means negation of the conclusion uh, is unsatisfiable uh, that means x has to be valid valid means it has to be true that means this is the this is considered to be the the original conclusion is considered to be the true kind of conclusion that means this follows from these three statements so in the same way you can check whether uh, 1 and 2 leads to 3 or uh, 2 and 3 leads to 1 all these things you can check just uh, you know uh, taking into consideration the same thing that uh, first you list out the premises and you take the negation of the conclusion and then see whether uh, it leads to the branch closure or not if it leads to the branch closure that means uh, the negation of the conclusion leads to unsatisfiability that means negation of x is uh, considered to be contradiction that means x has to be uh, the case x has to be true x has to be tautology so here that is the way to prove uh, uh, the, to show that a given formula is considered to be valid uh, whether or not uh, a given formula follows from that or not 
So now let us consider some more examples which are considered to be invalid and uh, those formulas which are invalid you can construct uh, uh, a counter example uh, within the domain. All the open branches indicates that uh, uh, it is a kind of counter example within the domain. So let us consider some more examples so that you will get used to this particular kind of technique that is the semantic tablux method. Uh, this one or two examples we will be considering and then we will uh, end this lecture. So now uh, let us consider uh, let us coming back to the consistency again uh, the problem of uh, consistency let us say we have a set like this px implies qx uh, and then there exists some x uh, uh, px and there exists some x not qx. So we have the in the in our set we have for these three formulas. So now uh, we are checking whether these three formulas are consistent to each other or not. So now you start uh, you numbering those things one two three. Now we are checking the consistency. Consistency. So the first thing that you do is uh, as usual in the uh, semantic tableaux method in the predicate logic is, is you have to handle the predicate. Uh, existential quantifiers first you can handle any one of these things now if you eliminate this existential quantifier here is an instance p a to existential instantiation now you do not have to jump to this one now you need to handle this one so now this is going to be not q but you are not supposed to use a it has to be b so this is 3 existential instantiation is this one so now 6 1 px implies qx holds for, for all x so that is why it has to hold for pa implies qa it has to be true for even pb implies qb you can you can all you can also use that particular kind of thing so we have used this pa implies qa now this is going to be pa and not qa so pa and not pa closes and not qa and you have not qb here and this branch opens that means uh, this particular kind of uh, interpretation um, satisfies these three formulas and all that makes these three formulas true together so that means this uh, these three statements are said to be consistent to each other now if you change this problem a little bit and then we are trying to see whether uh, so now in this case these three formulas are said to be consistent now just slightly change this particular kind of problem and then let us talk about uh, the same problem in a different way. So now let us see whether uh, you take these two statements into consideration. Now whether or not this not qx follows from these two statements or not. So now, so now we write it in the conclusion now. So for all x px implies qx there exists some x px and then there exists some x not, not qx whether this follows or not from these two premises and all. So how do we check whether or not this argument is valid or not. So again we use the semantic tableaux method in that the first step includes the negation of uh, the conclusion that is not there exists some x not qx you start with this particular kind of thing. So now here we have a definition for all x. Uh, qx is same as there does not exist some x not, not x in the same way there exists some x qx is same as not for all x not x so this is the standard definitions and all so uh, universal quantifier can be defined in terms of existential quantifier and existential quantifier is defined in terms of universal quantifier in this sense. So you use this particular kind of thing and then you put it here so this is simply for all x qx 3 by definition. So what we have done here if I have taken list out the premises you take the negation of the conclusion and then we are constructing a tree and we are going to see whether uh, the branch closes or not. So now uh, fifth one always handle this existential quantifier when you remove this thing there exists some x px it is going to be a 
So, 2 instantiation, instantiation is this one P A. So, now 6 1 uh, you can handle any one of these things now they all uh, these two starts with for all x only. So, now uh, one instance of this one is going to be uh, uh, P A sorry this is going to be uh, not uh, sorry P A implies Q A. So, this is the uh, instance of uh, this one. So, universal instantiation of this one is going to be P A implies Q A. So, this is if you expand this one it is going to be like this not P A and Q A. Now, you have another formula this thing for all x Q x that means it has to be true for even uh, A also. So, that is why you can write it straight away like this 4.1 Q A. So, this is 4 universal instantiation this. So, now P A and not P A closes, but this branch uh, remains open. That means, uh, from these two premises uh, that means negation of the conclusion negation of the conclusion does not lead to contradiction. So, that means we are not able to uh, we are able to construct a counter example even after denying the conclusion. So, what we uh, in the context of uh, uh, in the in the basic concepts we discussed about invalidity an invalid argument is an argument uh, in which you have uh, your premises to, to be true and the conclusion is false. If we can come up with an example where premises are true and the conclusion is false and that is considered to be an account considered to be a counter example for the given argument and hence that argument is invalid. So, here is an instance where you are, even if you deny the conclusion you still have uh, it still makes this uh, satisfiable and all that means true premises and false conclusion is going to be satisfiable in this particular kind of thing especially when Q A is tr true P A is true then this whole uh, statements are going to be true that means you have true premises and a false conclusion. That, sir, that will serve as uh, a counter example. So, uh, open from the open branch you can construct a counter example. So, for this particular kind of thing you can choose a domain to be uh, anything as a set of people a set of rivers or anything and then uh, in that particular kind of thing you need to have uh, some kind of relation or uh, in particular predicate and then you uh, whatever is true here you list it out. Uh, Q A and P A are true and based on that you can judge uh, that you know you can easily construct a counter example for uh, counter example within the domain. So, if you can come up with a counter example within the domain then obviously that argument is considered to be invalid. So, in this way we can solve some uh, difficult uh, problems as well just uh, consider one more example and then we will uh, uh, finish it off. You know. So, in the, in the context of uh, distribution of uh, universal quantifiers, we asked ourselves whether universal quantifiers uh, are distributed or not. So, that is uh, this particular kind of thing. Uh, for example, if you have uh, this formula for all x p x or q x. Uh, so, from this whether or not it, it follows that uh, means whether we can derive particular kind of thing for all x p x or for all x q x. If uh, for all x p x uh, implies for all x p x or for all x p x then uh, this this is distributed over this uh, uh, dis distributed over disjunction uh, universal quantifiers are distributed over the disjunction. So, again uh, we want to see whether this particular kind of thing holds or not. So, P x or Q x and then here it is individually we have written it like this. So, now again the uh, using the semantic tabulous method whether this argument this follows or not is the one which we are trying to check. So, you list out the premises like this P x or Q x and then you start with the negation of the conclusion for all x uh, P x for, for all x Q x. So, now uh, 3 you simplify this particular kind of thing then it will become for all x uh, p x negation of disjunction will become conjunction and then this will be for all x q x. 
So now uh, this can be written in this sense for all x uh, px and then if you simplify this thing it will be like this q x is only 3 simplification you will get this one 3 again simplification you will get this one. So now fourth uh, sorry sixth one now you further simplify this one not for all x px not for all x px is same as there exists some x you put this negation inside and then it will be this thing it is not the case uh, so there exists some x uh, not px uh, and then seventh one there exists some x not qx so how did we get this one four by definition and five by definition the definition is this one so uh, the problem is not at over no. so now we have there exists some x not px there exists some x not qx and then we have this particular kind of thing so now you always uh, try to eliminate this uh, existential quantifiers first before going to the universal quantifiers so now first time when you eliminate this existential quantifier and this will become not pa so this is uh, 6 existential instantiation and then uh, 8 uh, uh, 7 if you apply existential instantiation again then this will be not q it should not be a it should be b now uh, we have this thing. for all x p x implies a q s that is going to hold for any uh, any value any parameter you can substitute into it that is going to hold that means it satisfies that particular kind of formula. So now we have not p a and we have not q b and then for example if you substitute it as uh, p a and uh, so one instance of this one is going to be uh, p a r q a it can very well be like this also p b or q b also. So we take this into consideration then this will be like this p a and q a. So now in this case uh, this branch closes and this branch remains open but if you take uh, the other one into consideration instead of p a q a you are taken into consideration p b and q b. So then what will happen is this is the thing which happens this branch closes and this uh, left hand branch remains open in either cases uh, one of the branches remains open that means for all x px or qx uh, you will not be able to derive uh, for all x px or for all x qx so now that, that means that uh, this does not imply this particular kind of you can check whether you saw you replace it with uh, there exists some x and then you can construct a tree and you can see whether it distributes over the disjunction or not. So in this uh, lecture what we, we have done is uh, we have taken into consideration the semantic tablox method and then we discussed uh, in some detail with some examples as for getting ourselves familiarized with this particular kind of technique. So the semantic tablox method is uh, uh, simple to use and the rules are uh, uh, rules are very few in number and then it is easy to use and it can be implemented in the computers as well. So there are some of the uh, some important uh, uh, uses for uh, this particular kind of uh, technique but the problem here is is that uh, uh, are we are uh, human beings do we use a method like this particular kind of thing uh, that is a question that needs to be answered and all is it close to uh, common sense reasoning or uh, the way we reason etc and all uh, that that is a difficult question to answer but as far as uh, uh, implementation into uh, computers and machines etc and all this technique is going to be uh, uh, widely used. So in that context the one which is closer to uh, the human reasoning is what we call it as natural deduction method so that is what we are going to take up in the next lecture so in the next lecture we will be talking about the natural deduction method in the context of predicate logic.